Hey everyone, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team and today we released a small but really, really helpful uh, new update for Adobe Character Animator and that is the ability to edit replays. If you forget what replays are, here's a quick refresher. So replays in a lot of puppets are these little prepackaged animations that you can trigger at any time. So in this particular character, I've got a bunch of them over here in the replays column. If I select my character in a timeline, I should see any replays show up over here on the right. And if I press the little play button, I'll see you know, these different arm movements and mannerisms. And then I could drag these into triggers. And so when I press like A, S, D, F, and so on and so forth, my character is gonna do all these little animations uh, and have them show up. And so I can really quickly change between arm positions instead of having to, you know, drag them into place uh, manually with the, with the mouse or fingers on a touch enabled device or something like that. But up until now, once you've created a replay, it's done, it's over here, and there's no way to edit it. So if you check it out later and you're like, oops, I got the timing right, it's too fast, it's too slow, or there's a glitch here, or that sort of thing, you've gotta go back and recreate it and go hunt in your timeline where you originally made it and put it together, and it's just a mess. It, it'd be really nice if there were an easier way to do this, and luckily, starting today, there is. So let's start by making a slightly more complicated replay than just the arms moving. So I'm going to turn uh, the microphone and the nutcracker jaw off because typically for my replays, I just want them to be mannerisms and then I should have the ability to talk over top of them. So these little, you know, arm motions or head motions or that sort of thing. Then uh, I'm just going to position the arms like this. So it's kind of in a dance move. And then I'm going to trigger uh, the eyes closing, which I think is number four. And I'm just gonna record this for a few seconds. So let's try this, press record. And now I'm dancing back and forth and all of that. And now I'll stop. And you can see that that recording is now showing up those four seconds or so show up down here in the timeline. Now, if I wanted to make this into a replay, typically what we say is you want to blend any blend handles that are there. So it'll seamlessly blend between whatever position you're coming from and going to. So that's just a little thing I did here. So to turn this into a replay, all I have to do is select the stuff I want to bring in to this little prepackaged animation, right click it and go to create replay and trigger. That's going to do two things. Number one, let's twirl this up so I can see. Now I have this new replay here called dragger two, meaning two arms were dragged in a correct position. Eye gaze, this guy doesn't even really have any pupils so that part really doesn't matter. The face moving and then the triggers which is the eyes closing. If I had more things recorded, uh, those would also show up here. That's not the best title so I'm just gonna select this, press enter and call this you know, dance or something like that instead. And typically for my replays, I don't do let replay finish, I go to stop sustain replay so I'm just gonna do that. It works a little bit better with the triggering system. Now, if we go over here to the left hand side, I can see that the triggers panel, because I said create replay and trigger, a trigger has been created as well with all the same things. Again, let's press enter. Uh, let's select this, press enter and call it dance. And I think I've used a lot of keys here. I'm just gonna use M because I don't believe I've used that before. And let's do latch here. And now when I press the M key, my character is gonna start doing that little dance animation. And when I press M again, he's gonna go back to whatever state I had him in. And so typically when I'm creating the character, I'll make a bunch of these. So I'll go down, you know, to five seconds and then press record again and do, you know, okay, I want the arm to shake like this or him to wave hello. And you start to get this really long timeline with a bunch of different things in it. And it can be a little hard to maneuver and then to recreate a, a trigger or replay, usually it's all, I just delete what I've got and start over again because it's just too complicated to, or it has been too complicated to update that. But now it's a lot easier. So let's say uh, for some reason I deleted all of this or I forgot it or you know lost the file and I don't know what's happening, but I do see the dance is still available here. And now I can just right click on any replay and go to edit replay. And what that's going to do is create a new scene. So you see the scene is called Edit Replay Xbox Dance. And now I have this little mini scene at the bottom here that with these two little buttons for cancel and save edited replay. So this little timeline is exactly the length 
of my replay. It shows me everything in here. So I've got all my information and I could, you know, say, okay, I wish the, you know, I wish the handles, the, the arms um, blended in a little earlier, or I wish this came out a little shorter or something like that. Or I could record more things and say, you know what, let me also record um, the, you know, the lights blinking or hand claws uh, moving or something like that and add that and build this into a more complicated performance. And then once I'm happy with how that looks, I just go ahead, click save edited replay. And now that temporary timeline has gone away. I don't need to use it anymore. It's out of my way. It's out of the project panel over here. And now I just have my saved trigger. So if I were to press the play over here or the M key, my character is going to do a dance with those new parameters, including his hands that stopped a little earlier, as you see here. And then I'll press M to go back to his original position. So I love this feature because I use replays all the time in my cartoons. So for example, a lot of my characters, I even do replays for the eyebrows. You'll notice as I'm moving my eyebrows, this character isn't moving his because I have them all set to replays. And so if I want them to be raised or shift or kind of a quizzical look or all of that stuff, it shows up here as a replay. And so I have more control when I'm recording and editing to do that. I think I did them through draggers or keyframes or something like that package them together in replays and have a whole, you know, eyebrows uh, section, browse section over here of triggers that I can access. So having the ability to edit this makes it so easy to, you know, continue to iterate on things instead of having a really messy timeline. Like I have a timeline with like, you know, 20 different little, uh, you know, parts where I've recorded and I'd have to hunt around and put labels where everything was. Now I don't have to worry about any of that. I can just create replays, try them out. Hey, if they don't work, that's okay. Just edit them, make a few tweaks, see how it looks, come back. And uh, it's just a really nice and easy and non-destructible way uh, to create your animations. So I hope that's helpful. We would love to see what you make with replays and this new feature. So please use hashtag character animator when sharing things on social media so we can check them out. And if you have any questions about this feature or anything else that you're running into with Character Animator, the official forums are the best place to get help. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching and have fun.